Hi hi hi, Jakey Steve here, the long haired freaky dude. Today I'm going to review book three of Euclid's Elements, translated by Thomas L. Heath. This book focuses on circles and the properties of circles. It shows you how to do many useful things, such as how to find the center of a circle or how to draw a line tangent to a circle. It's easy to see how many of the things in this book can be practically applied. Uh, such as in architecture, engineering, etc. Book 3 introduces 11 new definitions and 37 new propositions. Many of the proofs in here are impossibility proofs, which means that he proves something by proving what it is not. Sort of like Plato. It's an incredibly useful tactic since we can't always directly prove what something is. There were a few impossibility proofs in book 1 and 2, but they make up a lot of the substance of book 3. So, look forward to those. With that said, these proofs were much easier to follow than the proofs of Book 2. Book 2's proofs were just, ah, uh, so hard. So hard to wrap one's mind around. But these, these made much more sense. Much easier to visualize, much easier to comprehend. If you struggled with Book 2, this would be a nice mind break. There are still a few difficult concepts to grasp, but nothing that's too overwhelming. Now while you read through book three, I highly encourage you to draw the propositions as you work through them. You can see here what I did in my notebook. I just drew out every single proposition using proper construction techniques, and then I took notes of all the proofs. And that really helps me to understand what it is he's trying to get at. I guarantee you'll see an immense improvement in your comprehension of these proofs. Drawing them out uses different parts of your brain and helps you achieve higher levels of understanding. Actually getting in there and working with it forces your mind to understand what it's doing. And it also draws one's mind into thinking in uh, what practical ways this can be applied. Not to mention, not only did I understand them better, but I also remember them better after drawing them out. Because a lot of the constructions in here are repetitive, you'll need them for future constructions, you start using them over and over, as long as you use proper construction techniques, and that using it over and over again sequentially it develops your memory of these proofs. Granted, you won't remember every single one, but you will remember the important ones, or the most important ones. Another thing of note, I figured that this book would build off of what we learned in book two, as book two built off of book one. But from what I remember, I don't think there were any uh, uses of book two proofs in book three. <laughs> Which is good for me because book two was nothing but a blur. Most of the reoccurring rules we see in book three come from book one, not book two. So, book three, the book of circles. You'll have a lot of fun with this one for it teaches many practical skills in geometry. So my questions to you are, what things in book three can be applied to today's world? How do you think they revolutionized the ancient Greek world whenever they were developed? Well, I'm Jakey Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. Thank you for watching this video. If you like mathematical propositions or historical treaties or philosophical discussions, then might I suggest checking out my channel and hitting the subscribe button. And in addition to that, the Great Books Challenge might be something that you'd be interested in. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, however vulgar, I don't know how you can be vulgar about math, but I don't know, surprise me, put them in the comments section below. Thank you guys. See you in the next video. Have a good day.